Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the guild boss, a very important part of the game and something you should be doing every single day. Now to participate in the guild boss, of course, you first have to be in a guild. You get rewards based on how much damage you do to whatever difficulty d dragon you attack. You can attack twice a day. You can use them on the same dragon if you wish. You will get double rewards or a second chest if your guild does kill the boss that day. So for example, we have killed Nightmare 1, 2 and 3. So if I attack 2 or 3, I will get a second chest tomorrow morning on reset. So the reward is the next day. So obviously you're going to want to make sure that you're hitting the highest dragon that you can for the most damage that you can. And the damage is, well, it's, it's a score and the score is blood, dragon blood. And as you can see, the value you need varies depending on the difficulty of the dragon you're on. This video will be primarily focused on Nightmare 3 as that is the most common dragon that people are farming and attacking. Nightmare 4 is very difficult and very very few people are able to get a strong hit on it. I am not one of them so it would not be very useful for me to make a video on it. But hopefully someday soon. So we will be talking primarily about Nightmare 3 although most of the strategies, placements and heroes will be the same throughout all difficulties. It's just this one is the parity for my account so it's quite it's a lot easier for me to talk about it accurately. Some of the potential rewards that you can get when you are in the nightmare stages. You can get myth essences, you can get legendary crystals, you can get legendary sage soul stones. So this is probably the most valuable drop you can get. I would say second is probably the legendary skill crystal. And then you would probably go back to the summon crystal, then the psychic power, then the myth extract. So mainly the top row is the most valuable stuff. So very valuable rewards, definitely worth focusing on. On top of that, guild boss is perhaps... Guild boss is the most difficult content right now. So once you start clearing all of the raids out, getting maximum and all that, clearing campaign on expert difficulty, guild boss will be where you will be looking next. Especially once you've got your gear raid farming team sorted and you're clearing stage 18, guild boss should be where you should focus your attention next. And you should be building heroes and farming gear for that end to make sure that you can get 6.5k blood on Nightmare 3 is a pretty good end game goal to go for and once you're getting that consistently pushing and aiming for a Nightmare 4 team is kind of the absolute end game goal at the moment for players as of the time of this video that is the hardest content most people can push for okay so this is Nightmare 3 I will use my simple team for now these are the heroes I'll use I would normally have a Lord here but just to simplify it these are the ones I will be placing I have Wrath for the Lord bonus and I have a full Nightmare team at the top I have Anvita as my solo healer, and then I have two kind of reject DPS because I don't have any better. So let's get into the strategies that are commonly used in the dragon. So first thing, you want to get down your heroes as soon as possible. I don't really find there's any particular rhythm or reason other than making sure that they are all within the ranges you would want them to be. I want to make sure that I have my DPS within Anvita's range. She is currently the best healer to use. If you can heal with just Anvita, that is ideal. If you cannot, Anvita and Wanaga are good. And if you cannot, Elowin is great by herself. And if not, then make it work with whatever you've got. But I would say that's the priority. Anvita, Anvita, Wanaga, Elowin, whatever else works. Anvita by herself is more difficult, but we'll go over the gearing and stats later. So as you can see, the boss did a raw. It hit everyone for quite a bit of damage. I need to get down my last hero so I can talk clearer. There we go. So now I have cooldowns coming off. So there are two strategies here. He's got Meteor Impact is going to hit everyone. So the main two attacks are the Raw and Meteor Impact. Raw does massive damage in AoE. Meteor Impact does massive damage and a dot in AoE. So you can see it's lots of healing required in this. That's why you want to have AoE healers. A Solo Anvita is harder, but you can make it work with the right gearing and being late game enough. So now there's a lot of damage on me. Again, there's two main strategies to adopt with what to do with your ultimates. If you are trying to make progress, save your ultimates to hit the shields. The shields are the main mechanic in Guild Boss. The way this works is there are three different stages where the boss will have a shield. The first one is at 4.07. But we'll check the times. I'll put the, the actual times up here. Apologies, I don't have it on offhand. I could be using Salazar's ult, but maybe I want to save it because in 13 seconds the shield is coming. If you do not break the shield in time, it gives massive damage and will almost certainly wipe your entire party. So the first priority you have is surviving the two AoE attacks that come. And then when this happens, this wall, you need to be breaking the shield. You can see this white bar at the top that's fading. So if I leave it, they'll break it, but it's a little bit risky. Once this bar hits bottom, destructive spit will fire and it will just wipe everyone, maybe other than Salovic because of his indestructible phase. So naturally you save your ultimates and then you pop them and then you can burst that white bar down. The, the boss becomes vulnerable. And then this is where you will pop your Anvitas ultimate to give everyone attack bonus 
Volker is great for debuffs such as these, the armor vulnerability. And then you just go ham and blast all your DPS out. So this is kind of the general state of guild boss. You need to keep everyone alive through the two AoE phases. You need to blow down the shield and DPS once the shield is down. So if you are strong enough where you don't need all of your ultimates for the shield. For example, my Salazar's ult comes off very quick and it's probably the highest nuke I have. I tend to use it off cooldown other than the third shield. Each shield grows in strength. There are three shields. The first shield is very easy to break. The second shield is a bit harder. The third shield is even harder. So I believe I've got another 40 seconds until the next ult comes up, the next shield comes up, so I have some time. So I'll pop Salazar's ult, I'll put the speed up a little bit, we have a meteor impact, and Vita's healing everyone up. And you can see this seems to be going fairly well. We have an Inferno Roar, which is another AoE damage, people are kind of low but not that low, and Vita will be able to keep them alive. You see Raph is by himself over here. He can self-sustain at Awakening 5. He is fantastic for that, so he is not concerned. Volker also has a lot of sustain, so she's okay. Everyone else is within Anvita's healing range, so she's looking after all these guys. So the shield should be up now. There we go. So it's about 40, 248. And now I can pop all of my debuffs. I'll start with Volker after Anvita, and that means that I get the debuff on the boss. And you can see the shield is about to break, so I can pop this to break it, or I can just wait a second. And then now, while the boss is vulnerable, I can blast and do more damage. So again, the general phasing follows the same thing. As it's Nightmare 3, sometimes I will hold back on Salazar's ultimate on the third shield, just to be sure that I can break it. And I will hold on to people with long cooldowns like Nyx, because maybe I want to make sure I have that for the boss's ultimate. So you can see the boss promotes after every time you break the shield. This makes him stronger, he does more damage with his attacks, and his next shield is stronger. But that's the general flow of how the boss fight goes. A bunch of damage comes out, it's promoted twice now. I have another 30 seconds until his shield comes back up again, so I have a bit more time. Another meteor hit. You can see the self sustainers on the right side are doing fine, and Vita's keeping everyone up. And I think he's going to do one more meteor, and then he'll put his shield up, perhaps. There we go. And as I think it's coming up, I'm going to start popping ultimates soon. Some of the longer lasting ultimates. There we go. And now, you can see that's everything's gone into that. And the, sh the shield is going down fine, but it took a lot longer than the first two phases. So you need to be mindful of that. It will take a bit of timing. Something I found with people whose ultimates are automatic, like Arrogance, you may need to tweak their timing on their placement to make sure that they are able to hit the third shield if you're having trouble on the third shield. That is one of the things that can cause issues. I had that problem with my arrogance when I max skilled him. Suddenly he wasn't landing on the right timing and it was kind of messing me over a bit. So there we go. That's pretty much how it functions. I'll speed it up a bit. You are going to want to make sure that people are alive during the AoE attacks, the two, the raw and the meteors. You are going to want to make sure that you are able to burst down the boss's shield. And you need to be mindful that each shield gets stronger as well as the boss with each phase. Your blood is very hard to see because of all these flickering. But if I pause it, you can see I'm at 6.2k at the moment. Which is about on the threshold for the final reward from Nightmare 3. Weirdly, so uh, once you break the third shield, you want to just be popping all of your skills off cooldown. Make sure that you're constantly using them because there is no more shield after the third shield. You want to get as much damage out as possible. I did not do this optimally. But that's fine because I'm actually going to exit this. Another weird thing to note. So although it says he rampages, he just leaves. And also he leaves two seconds early. So if I left this to two seconds, he would just leave and you would lose two seconds of DPS. Now I'm just doing this to test to show you a rough lineup. I'm going to do a bunch of different runs. So it's going to be a long video. But I don't want to waste my attack now. So I'm going to quit this battle. Three seconds remaining. And it doesn't consume my attack. So you can do this to test. And I can go to my stats. And I can show you quickly. Salazar miles ahead. Salavik doing a great job. Arrogance doing a great job. And then kind of as as usual for the rest of it. Now bearing in mind that Raph is not inside Anvita's buffs. Because he's self-sustaining. So that's generally how the runs go. It's important to keep track of when those timestamps are. I've forgotten again. The first one's 407. I'll put the rest up here again. I'll probably leave it in the corner somewhere in the video. It's quite important to keep in mind when they're up because you want to time your ultimates, especially if you're having trouble with the shields. And now we'll talk a bit about the team comp and we'll talk about some of the heroes and then we'll get into some more specifics. So one of the best things to do if you're not sure on who's good to use is to check the graph and go to world rankings and have a look at some of the strongest players on the server. 
Bear in mind, some of these heroes are only very viable because there are leader bonuses going on. You will notice a lot of Ignatius being used, and that means you will see a lot of Zillatus, and you will also see a lot of Janguers. And that is because Ignatius has really good a really good ultimate to increase the damage the boss takes, and he also has a leader skill that increases penetration for other members of his faction, which is really good against guild boss, a very tanky enemy. So your Jangwa may not get as much mileage as some of these guys if you're not using a Ignatius or a Twin Fiend as a Lord. You see a Twin Fiend here as well. So some heroes are dependent on the Lord bonus to be very powerful, but one thing you will notice throughout is Salazar is a monster. He features pretty heavily. You can also see Calypso is used a fair bit, but I think Calypso is much better when you have a Piercer Lord. You can see both of these have the Araka Piercer Lord. Outside of the Lord, Zilla 2 is always very good, but again is made even stronger by having a Lord for her faction. One of the reasons why I run a Nightmare team and why you see so many Nightmare units, you can see number 3 has Raph as a leader. You have Salazar. They also have Aku Kazik. And there is also a Hatsut. Is because you get Raph. Everyone has Raph. He was a login reward that everyone got on the 14th day. So everyone has access to the Epic Lord for the Nightmare faction, Raph. And that makes it very easy to field a Nightmare team, especially if you've pulled Nightmare units such as Salazar. Nightmare units are also very good at self-sustain and healing, and they are very heavy front fighters. Just lots of brute damage coming out the front, not much other quirky stuff going on. They just hit really hard. You also get Volker from the storyline quest completion. So Nightmare is a very clear, easy faction to go for if you don't have a big roster to pull from. In terms of healers, as I said before, Anvita is the number one healer to use. You'll see almost all of these teams have a Fife's Awakened Anvita. Anvita is fantastic because she heals a big cone around her and Guild Boss allows you to place a bunch of units in one cluster. There is no like spreading damage, so she's very ideal for that. And she mainly, the main reason you would use Anvita is because her ultimate gives everyone an attack bonus scaling on her attack. And when you awaken her, it also boosts them on their own attack as well. So there's a lot of benefit to be gained from Anvita. Beyond that, I have my eye on Setram. I think he's going to be very potent for damage. I think he's got a long way to go, especially when people start getting him awakened. His awakening one is incredibly potent for Guild Boss. But generally, for your team comps, you're going to want to have around three fighters, because that's the overlap. Remember, Anvita has like a cross shape with the diagonal one out as well. And that means that it's a lot easier to fit three fighters in next to her in her healing range, and then have other ranged DPS around. So my team doesn't quite handle that, but that's because I don't have good enough marksmen or mages that are worth taking over my fighters. Even if my fighters are outside of the healing range, Wrath can self-sustain fine and do more damage than my mages can. So that will be up to what your roster has. But in terms of the best units, with ideal scenarios, I would say Zilla 2 is by far the king of guild boss right now. I think Setran will be coming up quite close very soon once people start awakening him. But without an awakening, I think it will be quite difficult to be on parity with Zilla 2, who is just an absolute beast. Salazar is incredibly powerful as well. Other heroes that you see doing quite well. Calypso does great damage, but it seems to depend heavily on Araka, who is a very good Lord bonus. So I would say Salazar is more attainable DPS, because for Calypso to do great damage, you need the Araka Lord bonus. Beyond that, you also have Nocturne. Nocturne is a great single target nuking mage. He does a lot of damage. You can see some Ignatius is doing good damage. You can see Janguar is doing good damage. So I would say roughly those are the key units. But I have had a lot of success using Arrogance and Salavik as well. And Raph also punches quite hard. So I would say those are kind of the top general heroes. Obviously Twin Fiend and Ignatius go in there as well because they do good damage and they are lords for a very important faction. But yes, the best pulls are definitely going to be Zilla 2, Salazar, Araka with Calypso and Nocturne just for his absolute clout punching things by himself. So I'd say those are the top heroes to have, but again, I would not discount many of the other legendaries such as Salavik and Volker even has a good place. So for a bit more detail about the individual ones, the reason why the Infernal Faction is so good is because if you look, standard base attribute increase, which is good. Lord Twin Fiend cast Meteoric Strike. All faction team members gain penetration increase, crit hit increase, crit damage increase for 10 seconds. So if you need to burst the shield down or you want to do damage after the shield's gone down, you can pop this and everyone is gaining a load of damage in that faction. Now, if you have Ignatius instead, he doesn't gain the crit damage and he doesn't gain the crit rate, but he gains he still gains the penetration increase. 
and the penetration increase is probably where most of the damage is coming from anyway this will allow you to ignore 30 percent of the boss's defense that is a huge amount of damage increase having crit rate increase for most end game teams is not really going to achieve that much almost everyone has 100 percent crit rate on their dps heroes at that point and you should definitely be focusing on that so that is the reason why you see a lot of infernal blast heroes in that pool the reason you see a lot of nightmare members with wrath is because every single one you place down increments the attack speed of everyone from 5 10 20 to 35 percent increase in attack speed you do lose 20 percent healing but again they're so tanky the nightmare members and a lot of them have self-healing so they don't care that much Beyond that, we talked a bit about Calypso and how she was gaining a lot of benefit from having Araka as the Lord. Araka's bonus increases the damage you deal one tile beyond the original attack up to 50%. So that is a huge amount of damage that you can gain, especially if you can line up your placement to put Calypso right at the back. So two away from Anvita, which is two away from the boss, plus Anvita's tile. So you are five tiles away and you're getting a huge amount of damage increase out of that. So that is the reason why certain lords are particularly beneficial. So I would definitely recommend focusing on Lunaria, Araka, Twin Fiend, Ignatius, Wrath, and maybe Torador if you can make that work. Obviously, whatever your best heroes are, experiment, try it out, cancel out of the mission if it's not working. But those are the best lords to take for the best healers to take. And Vita is absolutely the queen of healing in this mode. She does not heal the most by herself. The healing ticks are not the greatest. But as you can see, her healing scales off of her attack. And her ultimate increases everyone else's attack based on hers. So let me go look and show you my Anvita quickly. At max skill, you can see that Anvita's ultimate lasts for 22 seconds. And it boosts all friendly units within her range by 40% of her attack. Additionally, if you go to her Awakenings, Graceful Dancing, which is her ultimate, increases friendly units attack by 20%. Now that is 20% of their attack. This is the big meaty increase here. Obviously, gaining a bunch of her attack, 40% of her attack is very good, but 20% of their own attack is going to be a lot better. These are going to be legendary fighters most often than not. Zilla 2 and Salazar, etc. So that's a huge increase, and it's additionally. So that's a, a massive chunk. If you want to solo heal with someone like Anvita, that's probably one of the harder milestones to get, but once you get it, it can be very rewarding and give you a lot of gains. Obviously, this is a fairly end game lineup. This is, I think this is probably some of the most ideal stats you can get on her. You want to focus on attack bonus. You don't want to focus on healing effect because if you look at her skill, her ultimate gives people attack based on her attack. It's not based on her healing or healing effect or anything like that. It's purely on her attack. So you want to channel as much attack into her as you can. For that reason, I've given her the Elite Mage set for 20% attack. And I've given her the Glacier set because it gives her attack based on her max HP. That isn't taken into account in this stat screen, by the way. So there is a bunch more attack coming in based on her max HP from this. So she'll be gaining, gaining quite a chunk of, uh, of, of she'll be gaining quite a chunk of attack from that set bonus as well. Other stats that will be useful for her, other than just attack and some HP, would be, of course, healing effect. You want to actually be healing people because it's quite hard to keep people up by herself. And Rage Recovery and Rage Eugen would be good as well. Attack speed can be useful, but attack speed does not scale super well. Don't waste your time going beyond 50, 60 attack speed intentionally. If you happen to get some, it's nice. It is a good benefit. Don't trade off. There's an opportunity cost. Don't trade off other stats such as attack or healing effect in favor of attack speed, especially once you've gone over 50. There's a lot of diminishing returns on attack speed at the moment. Crit chance and crit damage do nothing for Anvita. It is a dump. Defense makes her tankier, so that's fine. So that's generally the priority. Attack, probably then after attack, healing effect, then HP. Then you want some recovery for rage, regen, rage recovery, and the attack speed is good as well. But there's dumping the, the crit stats. Now the gear I have on mine, you can see I focus predominantly on those things. So lots of attack, lots of health, lots of healing effect. My rights items all focus on having attack bonus as the primary stat. And I all want to have decent healing effect. So yeah, I think this is a pretty a pretty decent Anvita. I would aim somewhere near this if you want to be solo healing. Much weaker than this and you will start having people drop off, especially if they're weaker. And you'll want to solo heal with Anvita. So I think around this, if you want to use this as a, as a, a rough benchmark, a very rough benchmark. Seems to handle it quite well. But definitely check out other people's in the graph to see how they do. And there are, of course, many healers you can use aside from just Anvita or as well as Anvita. Something you'll notice from these top teams is that everyone is using Soulless Doll. I don't have her yet, so I, I didn't mention her earlier because it slipped my mind as I don't have her. But one thing I've noticed is that the vast majority of people using her use her at Fifth Awakening. There are a few who use her before that. If you have a look at her skill set, you can see from her skills... No talent, mono heal, so single target heal, 
in a kind of standard healing range. 60% of her attack one unit. Her ultimate increases her healing amount for 20 seconds and increases healing target. So it's pretty standard. Her basic attack heals. Her ultimate allows her to heal more and heal two people at a time. Her passive gives her rage regen to all allies within her attack range while her ultimate is activated. So you can see her ultimate lasts for 20 seconds. It has quite a high rage cap on it though. She gets some rage recovery on allies while her ultimate is activated. And it's not too bad. It's like 1.2% rage recovery per second, which is pretty decent. But this is not really enough to be worth a space in a dragon team, right? It's just a, a tiny bit of rage recovery. Elowin kind of does the same amount, but is also a way stronger healer. So why do they take her? If you look at the awakenings, each healing restores 1% rage of rage cap. That's quite big. That's a lot of rage recovery over the course of the dragon fight, which is like quite a long time, nearly five minutes. Second one is some health. Third one reduces the rage cap on her ultimate, making it a lot easier to have it up, which means providing more rage recovery to the rest of her team. And the fourth one is some attack, which is nice for her heals, I suppose. And the fifth one is each cast of Light of Bliss, which is her ultimate, increases the efficiency of accumulating rage by 15% until the battle ends, up to five stacks. So that's quite good. So it'll allow her to have her ultimate up significantly faster and boosting her rage regen. And she should be able to have quite a high uptime on her ult. And I'm assuming that's why people use her. I don't use her, but I'm guessing it's because she can just keep pushing everyone's rage cap up and you have a lot of ultimates going off throughout the fight. So she seems to be pretty potent for that. And you see a lot of people using her. As for how to build her, one could assume it is pretty standard for a healer. She does not need to be tunneling just attack as you see with Anvita because Anvita needs it specifically for a skill which isn't a heal whereas Solar Stole is a healer so as you can see Elite Healer set and the Eslepius set so focused primarily on healing effect and lots of attack bonus for the heal scaling so that's what you're going to see from most builds for her attack bonus, attack bonus, healing effect, rage recovery it's pretty easy to build healers for this really committing a slot for a healer you want to make sure they, they prove their worth but the healing is not too bad to do so yeah, I would definitely say these are the two best healers right now, Anvita and Solus Doll. You can also use Wanaga. Wanaga was a very, very dominant healer for a long time, but you can see in these lists she has fallen off quite a lot. And I can't actually see her in this list. There we go. And so here's Wanaga. You see Wanaga used a fair bit. Again, pretty standard healing effect and attack is being used on Wanaga. She's a bit less popular now. She was nerfed a bit in the recent patch as well. Star Piercer, Wanaga... So if you look at her skills, 60% of attack on one heal within range. Again, same as before we saw with Solar's Doll. And you see her ultimate when activated bounces heals amongst targets as well as instantly healing people and increasing her healing amount. And her passive, every 40 seconds, she gives all allies within her attack range 8 seconds of 50 attack speed bonus, which is obviously increasing based on her skill ups. And you can see from some of her awakening effects, increases the duration of that gives passive attack speed to people while she's out on the field and generally increases her healing so she is a very good one as well but as you can see from the lists i don't have wanaga and i don't have solar's doll but looking at the top graphs you can see that the highest players are using solar's doll over over wanaga now wanaga was previously very popular but it seems solar's doll has stolen her slot as to whether or not you should be using anvita by herself or anvita alongside solar's doll i don't know i don't have solar's doll yet so for me, I am just using Anvita by herself. I don't have great DPS for my last two slots. So if Solar Doll really can push my ultimates out a lot faster, then it would be better for me to use than someone like Nyx, for example, or maybe Volker. So it would definitely be something I would try if I had a Solar Doll. So definitely try that out if you do have her. Anvita and Solar Doll together would make healing a lot easier as well. On top of that, something to keep in mind that may become very important in the future the gear sets were recently redone in the latest update on the test servers and the fracture set which was previously the shield breaker set so gear transferred has this set bonus now crit damage 40 percent when hp is above 70 percent this is the strongest damage increase set you can get on accessories this is probably going to be the most dominant set and keeping your heroes above 70 percent hp will become quite important for the max damage output if solar Stall really can hold her own and can and justify having a second healer slot in the raid then this will make it a lot easier to maintain the fracture bonus throughout the entire fight which will become very very powerful so i think that's another reason to take a second healer but with that we'll go on to talk about a bit more about the dps units you want to make sure that your dps have 100 percent crit rate this has gone over because of the changes to the weapons and yes i focus entirely on crit rate and try to balance out my attack bonus with my crit damage bonus as percentages so this is near 
I know, 170% attack bonus, and this is like a 200% crit damage bonus, so I would want a bit more attack on him ideally, but, you know, that's what we got. I won't go into it too much on the other heroes, but I want you want to balance out having 100% crit rate and then balance having attack and crit damage for the most damage output. Obviously, you want them to be a little bit tanky. You don't want to be throwing, throwing them out there with no health whatsoever. Raph is someone I use extensively as well. He also has 15% crit chance from his awakenings. You absolutely want to get this guy awakened when you can. You will continuously get soul stones from him from monthly login rewards. But five months to get him maxed is kind of a long time. So maxing him yourself is something I've done and I, I wouldn't be against recommending it. For stats, the same deal, just crits, getting high attack and high crit damage. He is very good. He is very good at self-sustaining as well. His Awakening 5 is really the big juicy one. Upon triggering a heavy blow, self heals with 30% of all damage dealt. That's massive. 2 gives him 15% crit damage. He gets some penetration as well, which is very good as we discussed earlier on Guild Boss, which has very high defense. And yeah, generally he's just a very good character to use and very accessible. So definitely field Wrath in your team. I think that about covers it for heroes. I don't know how much more detail I can get into without it being redundant. Again, Anvita is fantastic to use if you have her and you can build her to a good level. This will vary depending on what dragon you're on. If you're struggling to use just Anvita and you have a Wanaga, then use her. The reason for that is because she grants attack speed to allied heroes to make everyone else do increased damage. Guild boss, the dragon is entirely a DPS race. It is all about how much damage you can pump out. And so when you have to use healers, you want to use the healers that can increase the damage output of the rest of your team. Elowin is great because she only takes up one slot. And that's why the ideal is Anvita, because she can ideally take up one slot and also provide attack bonuses. Elowin can take up one slot, doesn't provide attack bonuses, though she does have a passive which grants rage recovery to everyone, which I do think is nice, but it's, it's not quite the same level as an Anvita. There is also another person in the same faction, the Esotericist, that has recently come out called Laurel. She seems very interesting for Guild Boss. I suspect a lot of people will be toying around with her. She has the ability to restore rage for allies and she has the ability to grant a damage increase of 20% at max skill to allies when they use their ultimate. The issue with Laurel, however, is that she is a mage. She is not a healer and she doesn't do a great deal of damage from what I've heard from my friends who've used her. So at the moment, it's not looking good for Laurel. It feels like she's built to helping Guild Boss because of her ability to recover Rage and her ability to buff allies when they ultimate, which is ideal for the Dragon. But as it stands, I've heard it's not quite working out because you're, you, you're losing a slot to get hold of her and she needs to contribute a bit more than she is. If you haven't pulled these heroes for Guild Boss and you're progressing early, Raph is king and Vita is fantastic. Jangwa is a very good DPS bow. Bear in mind, a lot of this is down to the Lord benefit of the Infernal from Ignatius. Uh, you, if you don't have him, you might not get as much out of Jangwa. Other DPS that are good, Elka is very good from the Epic tier because she has the ability to apply a defense reduction of 20%, which we talked about earlier again. Defense reduction is huge. You can now see the dragon's debuffs, at least on the latest updates you can. Debuffing is very important. One of the reasons why Volka is used a fair bit is because her ultimate applies physical vulnerability and magic vulnerability both at the same time. So 20%, they take 20% bonus damage, which is really nice for 15 seconds. The rest of it is kind of passable. It just gives her some sustain and to heal the rest of the team, which is useful. But primarily when you take Volker, it's mainly going to be for this ultimate, which you want to do at the start of the shield and then blow all of your DPS after that. There are, of course, a bunch of other epic heroes you can be using. Ignatius is fantastic. Additionally, you can use Lunaria if you have her, just because these are lords along with Wrath. So the epic lords are very potent, very powerful to use. The non-lords that you would definitely consider using would include Deimos. He is a werewolf that has a very good DPS output. He was nerfed a bit recently, but I think he still does very well. Another thing that you will notice is Akukazik is being used quite a bit. I'm fairly certain the reason he is being used is because he can inflict a lot of bleed. And you can notice if you check out some people that they are using the Scarlet Hunt Myth Artifact. Increases damage by starting at 20% to targets with bleeding. So 20% flat damage increase to bleeding targets. And you can see people putting it on Zillatu even who does not inflict bleeding in any way. I don't think this is the, like, the most cookie build but it's definitely a viable build if you can maintain a high rate of bleed. Another thing to keep in mind if you're running these kind of teams you would definitely want to have your Salazar awakened at the first tier at least. 
because it increases his ability to apply bleed by another 15 percent i believe or 10 percent but it's, it's huge so if you can run something like a bleed team and give people that myth artifact to increase their damage by 20 percent it is a huge damage gain to get hold of so a kukazik is definitely a, a viable option jangua is of course very viable but you do want to have the ignatius lord bonus or twin fiend and really any strong single target mage or marksman is going to have some good showing you can see there's people using Surya. I used Nalvras initially. He's not great, but for what I had at the time, he wasn't too bad. So there's definitely a lot of people you can pull on. Again, check this list, check the rankings to see what people are building. But for the most part, it is quite a hero heavy area in the game. You do need a lot of legendaries to get very far. The healers are definitely the lighter side of it. You don't need an Elowin, which is quite nice. But for the DPS side, you will see non-stop Zilla 2 and Salazar right at the top. Another small tip for you if you are trying to progress in a run that you are having trouble with, so you're not able to beat the third shield and it's wiping you, something you can consider doing is bringing a defender. Someone especially like Regulus is perfect for this and you can drop them down before the shield doesn't break and you're about to get wiped. Regulus, for example, has an invincibility state of one health and he will survive and then you can place your units after. You can despawn your team just before you start hitting the shield if you know you're not gonna break the shield. You don't get any blood when you're attacking the shield in the latest update. So if you know you're not gonna break the shield but you wanna get some more blood damage out, despawn all of your heroes just as the shield comes up. Let Regulus or a very tanky defender stay. If they survive the attack, then just replace everyone when you can and you'll maybe get another dozen seconds or so of damage on the boss, which might be enough to get you over. So it's just a tiny little tip there. One last thing to keep in mind, I haven't done it because I'm trying to get my auto runs better, but if you were trying to get higher blood counts or if you're trying to progress or you're trying to get enough contribution to kill the boss for your guild so that you will get double reward, then you should be using an assist unit. Now, I would recommend not relying on the obvious choice of a Zillatu or a Salazar even or even a Calypso. And the reason is a lot of these heroes benefit massively from the Lord bonus. That's what makes them strong. And unfortunately, assist heroes don't get the Lord bonus because they're kind of in a separate slot out there. So I prefer to pick Deimos is my choice because he is Lordless and he contributes a lot of damage regardless. I would definitely recommend picking up some or, or trying new heroes out. They will still contribute a lot of damage. But if you pick up a Jangua, she's not going to do that much damage because she's not going to get the Lord bonus that she would normally get in a team. So you have to consider when taking an assist hero that they're not going to get the benefit they normally would. So yeah. But definitely try out using assist heroes. It can help you all. As always, if you're having any difficulties with a run, you can just exit the run. Do it before two seconds as it does for some reason end prematurely. Hopefully they fix that soon. I'm going to leave it here. And if you have any questions, if you want to put any suggestions to help anyone out, leave it below. And thank you very much. Have a good night. Bye-bye.